Welcome, and thank you so much for joining us for another exciting, Dag the Aviator video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hey folks, so I was asked by a couple of followers if I could make an expanded video on the stall testing I did on the wing design I have on my MSL2 188 inch 59 pound RC electric airplane. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Before we dive into this though, I want to talk about my sponsor RTL Fasteners. If you need bolts, nuts, servo screws, any type of fastener for the hobby, go to the website and if you purchase more than $25 in product and you use the code DAG25, you'll get a 25% discount. It's a pretty sweet deal and I'd really recommend you go and look at their site. So my MSL2 is a plane that I made up in my head and built uh, quite a few years ago, four or five years ago. And I was always wanting to create an almost stall-proof wing. And when I saw this wing design in CompuFoil, I thought that if I were to adjust the inside ribs uh, basically with a little bit higher angle attack than the outside ribs, the inboard, also having much less square inches, should stall first. I design all of my wings for my aircraft using CompuFoil, which is a really cool tool for designing wings. And this is a pretty standard file that's within CompuFoil, but what I did was I adjusted some of the, uh, the links between the places where the ribs change the shape of the wing, if that makes sense. So, you know, when you think about how a wing stalls, you know, people will put washout in full-scale airplanes so that the wing is more predictable. And that helps us in a couple of ways. One, in full-scale, keeps us from getting killed if we do something funky. But on a model airplane, it just makes it a lot more safe to fly our investments without them falling out of the sky unpredictably. In this picture here, you can clearly see that the inboard third of the wing has a lot less square inches than the outboard two-thirds. And with the inboard having a little bit higher angle of attack, it stalls earlier, which still gives me aileron th authority through a stall. But I wanted to see just how much I could push the airplane before I lost all control of the wing. As we look at this picture, you can see I put yarn, uh, I think there are approximately five or six, no, six inch lengths, that's right all over the wing and I used scotch tape to mount it to my wing. I did clean the wing with alcohol so the scotch tape would stick, but I really wanted to see what the airflow was gonna do over the wing. Now they do this on full scale all the time, but this is a big model airplane and I put my GoPro on the tail so we could see what happens. One cool thing about putting the yarn on the wing is during the entire flight from the takeoff to doing the stall testing to the landing, I gotta see how this wing worked in all the kind of different flight regiments. You know, we all know that probably 70% of the crashes have happened while turning base to final. And this was the first time I'd done this type of stall testing on this size of a model. So this coming, actually in the summer of 2023, I'm going to do some spin testing. I'm going to do a lot more deeper dive into the way this wing works. But this isn't just a stall test video. It's also looking at how the wing interacts with the entire kind of flight regiment that I was doing each day. So this is greatly slowed down, and this is the first stall I did of the day. And I was amazed how much back stick it took to really get it to stall. And um, you'll notice I'm putting a little bit of aileron input in here to see if I still have aileron control. And I really was amazed how aggravated I had to get the plane to really quit flying. Even though you can see a lot of the wings stalling right now, the plane is still falling. And right here, as you see it start to fall off, that's it stalling. And I freeze it right here. And I want you to look at that entire wing and just see how almost all the yarn, except for the left outboard, is completely stalled. Completely stalled. It's, it's really, really, um, it was really interesting to see this video once I landed and figured out what was going on. 
while this is not a stall, this is me pulling a pretty hard turn at a relatively slow speed to see if I could get any part of the wing to stall. And you can see the aileron stall a little bit, but the actual wing didn't stall. This is a pretty cool video that I've slowed way down of the, I think this was my third stall of the day. So watch here, I'm testing to see that I still have a lot of aileron control while the wing starts to stop to fly. And if you notice, the inboard does stop, start to stop flying first, but I've got most of this wing stalled right here, and I still have aileron input. So this wing, um, having that inherent almost washout effect out at the outboard third was really interesting. Now here, I pull a really hard left turn to see if I can get it to stall and roll on its back. And I can't. I mean, even though you can still see a lot of that left wing is stalled. Okay, the right wing's not stalled at all. And that's normally what causes you to roll inverted and crash. But the outboard of that wing on the left, where the number two is, was still flying. So I thought that was just really fascinating. Here's another part of the video where I slowed it way down. But this is me going to pull what I call an aggravated left-hand turn. And I'm really far back on the stick. I'm trying to see if I can get the plane to stall like we stall when we're turning like base to final. And if you notice right here, I do get a little bit of the left wing to stall right here. I mean, I'm at like quarter power right here. And look how much the left wing is trying to stall, but the outboard left wing isn't. Just the inboard was right there. So it's really interesting. Right here again, you'll see the inboard of the left wing starting to stall a little bit, and the outboard's not. So this wing is really kick-ass. I mean, it really does do exactly what I was hoping it would do. But I want to do spin testing. I want to do a lot more deeper dive on it, too. Now this is what I call a really aggravated stall, just to see if the plane would roll on its back. And I really slowed this down, so this is going to take a couple of seconds, folks. But I want you to really look at... Uh, I know there's some imperfections in the design of the wing just by the way some of the yarn isn't always stuck to the surface, especially around the inboard side of the ailerons. But watch as I pitch up here. And right here I went to full power and just from level flight and then started slowly going to full elevator. I didn't have enough airspeed to pull a loop because I would have to go into a dive to pick up that speed. But watch what happens here when I really abruptly get the whole wing to quit flying here. You'll see the yarn go nuts. I wish the sun would have been behind me that day, but I was trying to fly directly into the wind. But right now, the entire wing, all the yarn is going nuts, and watch the whole airplane just fall through here. But the, the crazy thing is, is it didn't have a habit to roll on its back or do anything strange. Now, I want to do this one day with an uncoordinated uh, stall where I've got a little bit of left aileron and a little bit of right rudder and see if that will uh, make you know the, the, the problem worse. But this wing is extremely predictable. So here we have a takeoff that I've slowed down 50%. And I want you to notice just how this wing, because what I did is once I was in the air here, I throttled back to about 75% power. I wanted to kind of do a slow flight takeoff. Now you can notice the ailerons do lose uh, you know, the flow. Um, when they're in the down position. But this wing, I mean, I'm not going really fast here, folks, and this wing is being very, very predictable. Very predictable. And um, it was just a really cool experiment just on this takeoff here. So I've slowed this down a little bit. I'm flying downwind and climbing, kind of doing slow flight a little bit here, just to see how this uh, wing interacts on a windy day and right here see you can see the inboard section stalled a little bit and it'll happen again a little bit right there a little bit but watch as I turn left hand here I'm trying to get it to roll on its back here and you can see the left hand side inboard is stalling without a doubt that whole left inside part of that wing is stalling but because the outboard is still flying it's not rolling on its back so that's a great kind of example of what happens to a lot of warbirds when they get slow and they're turning base to final. This is really cool because I'm trying to fly slow flight here and just see if I can get the wing to just do something wonky. And if you notice, I keep going in and out of little stalls there, but I still have aileron control. I'm rolling my ailerons to see if I still have control. And then in this kind of a steep turn there, 
And keep in mind, I'm flying really slow. Now, this plane has an extremely light wing load, so it's very forgiving, and I'm not afraid I'm going to spin it in and crash it. But it's just it's interesting to see how the plane behaves. So here, I'm going to kick a, quite a bit of left rudder while giving just a little bit of left aileron. And I want to basically make the back end skid around here a little bit and see what happens to the wing. I'm, I'm, I'm slow. I'm, I'm getting really slow right now. So right here, you can see the head, heading change a lot. And that's me kicking in the rudder. And if you notice the wing, the inboard sections are stalling, but the outboard sections aren't stalling as quick. And the very tips stall at the very last. But, you know, this is me just checking to see I got aileron control, slow flying, and it is, it's rock stable, folks. It's really a cool wing, and uh, I can't wait to do spin testing uh, next summer. And I'm going to do a lot more stalling. I'm also going to put the yarn on the tail and on the rudder and, and vertical stab and all of that, too. Now... This is greatly slowed down, but this is where I was really just trying to fly as slow as I could and try to hold heading, which I didn't do a very good job. But watch how long this wing stays stalled while I'm slow flying here. And I shouldn't say stalled. The inboard section is stalled. But, I mean, I'm, I'm messing with the ailerons a little bit here to see how it how it's acting because I'm not in the airplane, okay? I'm, I'm on the ground visually trying to get this to fly as slow as I can. But you notice here that a lot of the wing is, is stalling and then not stalling and then stalling. And this is me just trying to fly it right at the edge and still keep flying now you notice i am slowly turning left and i don't know if that's the torque of the engine because the engine's only like 40 percent power right now and it might have been me just not holding enough right rudder but the plane is slowly it turns 90 degrees slowly while i'm doing this slow flight but notice here i keep moving the ailerons to see if i got aileron authority and i do i i still had aileron authority through this entire slow flight right here even though a lot of the wing was stalled I mean, it's really, really cool being able to visualize and see how this all works. I super love these videos. So this is the last video of the night, and this is where I am doing a aggravated full stall landing. Now, I'm not a fan of full stall landings because if you don't do it right every time and you've got a high wing load, you can damage the airplane. There's a reason you don't see full stall landings in 747s, okay? So if you notice here, I'm going to freeze the frame in just a second. But right here, I'm kicking up the elevator really hard. And right here, I stop it. And you can see the whole wing is basically stalled. Now, notice again, it's, it's turning left a little bit. It's rolling left. And I don't have any power on. So it's, it's not torque. So there's something going on that I don't quite understand. It may be an instance problem. Uh, who knows what it is? But also, watch how great the landing gear is on this airplane, because I just mash it right here. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, this plane is so super exciting, folks. But I just love learning things about what makes our planes really do what they do. There's so many experts out on YouTube and the world and all these know-it-alls. And everything I do on my channel, I'm trying to show to you in real time how it works. And uh, can't wait to next summer where I can do some spin testing. I'm going to do some aggravated accelerated stalls with this yarn on the wing. But I really want to see how this wing performs for the entire envelope. Now, one neat thing about this airplane, you'll notice it pivots on it each wheel at different times. It has independent drum brakes that I designed for it. So I like to kind of show off and, and pivot the plane around. So look, everybody, have an awesome night. Get kids involved in model aviation. Please get kids involved. Uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe my videos. And let me know what kind of content you want because I still have like 30 videos I need to make from people telling me. But I still love the input and I love people telling me what they'd like me to build. So have an awesome night. Make sure you get out and fly. Don't just spend all your time uh, behind a computer watching my videos. Stay safe. Rock on, everybody.